Welcome to part 1 of the chapter that discusses the international flow of funds and exchange rates. After studying this chapter, you should be able to accomplish the following. The Balance of International Payments The balance of payments, or the BOP, is an economic indicator showing how a country's government and economic policies are working. The balance of payment is a statement of account summarizing all transactions of a country with that of other countries in the world. It uses the term balance because the BOP uses accounts that is debited or credited. Just like in double-entry bookkeeping, Theoretically, the transactions cancel each other out. The BOP shows a plus for inflow of funds or minus for outflow of funds. The BOP has two major components, the current account and the financial account. The current account is composed of the trade balance, the service balance, income balance, and net transfers. The financial account is composed of foreign direct investments, security investments, and net financial derivatives. Let us discuss the components of the current account. The trade balance is the net of plus exports minus imports. Exports are a plus or cash inflows, while imports are a minus or cash outflows. Following the same line of thought above, the service balance is the net of export services minus import services. Income balances are returns or profit made from investment abroad minus returns paid to foreigners for investing domestically. Example of returns made from investing abroad is when Jollibee, a Filipino company, for example, invests in coffee bean and tea leaf a U.S. company. The profit made by investing in the U.S. business constitutes a plus for the income balance. Balance of transfers are cash transfers that include foreign aid received from other countries minus cash aid delivered to foreign countries. So when the Philippines receives foreign aid from Japan, China, or the U.S., this represents a plus for our balance of transfers. When we deliver cash aid to other countries, this is a minus for our balance of transfers. Let us discuss the components of the financial account. The financial account tells how a country's current account is financed. Foreign direct investment represents purchases of foreign fixed assets, such as factories and equipment, built and purchased abroad. Also, fixed assets in a country purchased by foreigners. Security investment account will be for any buying or selling of portfolio assets like stocks and bonds in the international financial market. During the technology boom in the 1990s, for example, the U.S. experienced tremendous cash inflow as investment in shares of stocks of computer companies attracted many foreign investors who wanted to take advantage of the perceived profit opportunities. These represent a cash inflow for the U.S. under security investments. Net financial derivatives are statistical discrepancies that reconcile imbalances between the current account and the financial account. To ensure that debit and credit entries in the BOP statement sum up to zero, these are items that account for the discrepancy of the current account and the financial account balance. This may include items like illegal trade. A terminology in investment is risk premium, the added return required by investors for risk associated with a security or asset. This might affect security investment accounts. A negative security investment or when there are few foreigners who purchase financial assets 
for fear of not being paid, these foreign investors may require risk premiums. Due to the central role of currencies in the trade and in the balance of payments, we should give attention to the marketplace for buying and selling currencies, the foreign exchange market. The exchange of currencies takes place in foreign exchange markets, often referred to as Forex. It is not a physical market, but it refers to transactions of buying and selling currencies with a network of international banks. The largest Forex traders are Citibank, JP Morgan and Chase, and Deutsche Bank. The function of the foreign exchange market is to facilitate international trade and investment like foreign direct investments and security investments. An exchange rate is nothing more than a price at which one currency can be converted to another currency. Note that we are comparing the value of one currency with another country's currency. In a free market oriented foreign exchange market, major currency values are determined by the demand and supply. This is called the independent floating exchange rate system. For example, exchange rates between the dollar, euro, and yen are market determined. The values of some currencies, like the Thai baht, the Indian rupee, are determined by the managed floating exchange rate system. In this system, the currency's value depend partly upon demand and supply and partly on active government intervention by means of its central bank, which purchases and sells its own currencies to manage exchange rates. The fixed exchange rate system is one in which the country pegs its currency at a fixed rate to a major currency or group of currencies. The exchange rate fluctuates within a narrow margin around a central exchange rate. The Forex market consists of spot, forward, and futures markets. The spot market trades currencies on a real-time basis. The spot market or cash market is a public financial market in which financial instruments or commodities are traded for immediate delivery. The electricity market works as a spot market where power supply and demand is matched instantaneously. Generators are paid immediately for the electricity they produce because retailers pay immediately for the electricity their customers consume. The forward market are purchases and sales of currencies in the future with prices established at a previous time. For example, suppose that a European firm has contracted to pay for some imported goods from the U.S. in dollars. The European firm will make payment when the goods arrive one month later. It can use what is called a forward contract to lock in the future euro-dollar exchange rate, also known as the forward rate. Example, if the exchange rate at the time of the agreement is $1.50 per euro, the European firm may lock it at a forward rate of $1.60 after 30 days. Whether the exchange rate rises or fall, the firm pays at a forward rate of $1.60 per euro. Why would the firm lock the exchange rate? Because it knows the exchange rates can change, affecting the price of their payment. More about forward rates later. The futures market is an auction market, meaning it is a marketplace much like the stock market, in which participants buy and sell commodities and futures contracts. For instance, if a coffee farmer sells coffee beans at $4 per pound, making a profit at that price, he would wish to protect his profit from price volatility by inviting investors. The investors agree that if the price for coffee goes below a set rate, the investor will pay the difference to the coffee farmer. 
The farmer is thus insured from the loss when price of coffee falls. If the price of coffee goes up higher than $4, the investor keeps the profit. Investors speculate on the change in the price of commodities in futures markets. An American traveling to the Philippines will wish to convert dollars to peso. He purchases pesos at the bid or buying price posted in banks. This is the price foreign currency is bought. When Filipinos wishes to convert peso to U.S. dollars, the asking or selling prices of the U.S. currency will be posted in banks. This is the price of the U.S. dollar. The difference between bid and ask prices for a currency is the bid-ask spread. It represents the transaction fee earned by the bank. The REC codes gives the price of a foreign currency in domestic currency or the number of peso per one unit of foreign currency. This is the common expression of foreign exchange in a country. Indirect quotes are the reciprocal of the direct quote or the prices of the Philippine peso, for example, in foreign currency terms. As an example, the spot rate for the dollar may be quoted at 47 pesos per U.S. dollar. So the indirect quote would be 1 U.S. dollar over 47 pesos or 0 0.21 US dollars per 1 peso or 1 peso will cost 0 0.21 US dollars The forward rate is the price at an earlier time for a foreign currency established for a future delivery in the forward market like in the previous discussion about forward markets, traders who are expecting to pay or receive foreign currency at a future date may agree to set a predetermined foreign exchange rate. The difference between forward and spot exchange rates reflects expectations by investors about future exchange rate movements. Discount is the selling of a currency at a spot rate that is less than the forward rate. For instance, if the spot rate for the dollar is 45 pesos and after 60 days, the forward rate is 46 pesos per US dollar, the market expects that the Philippine peso will depreciate against the dollar in the next 60 days. Because the peso is depreciated in the forward market per dollar, then in the spot market, foreign exchange dealers say that the peso is selling at a discount in the 60-day forward market. Premium is the opposite, the selling of a currency at a spot rate that is more than the forward rate. If the peso was expected to appreciate in the 60-day forward market against the dollar, it would be selling at a premium. For instance, if the spot rate for the dollar is 45 pesos and after 60 days the forward rate is 43 pesos, the market expects that the Philippine peso will appreciate relative to the dollar in the next 60 days. Again, firms use the forward market to lock in future exchange rates and ensure against uncertain future currency movements. This method of setting forward rates is an insurance that reduces future exchange rate risks. This method of risk protection is also called hedging or a hedge. It is essential to understand the various international monetary systems the world has developed to facilitate international trade. In 1944, the Bretton Woods Agreement established a global currency system based on a gold standard 
with the US dollar pegged at a fixed rate of exchange to gold in an effort to control inflation. Before the Bretton Woods Agreement, countries can freely print money to generate employment and kickstart the economy. However, reckless printing of money led to inflation. The International Monetary Fund or IMF was established under the Bretton Woods Agreement to help ensure the stability of the international monetary and financial system. It seeks to foster smooth functioning of the international monetary system, provide emergency funds as a lender of last resorts to countries, and offer financing to countries conditional on recommended economic changes. Member countries contribute to the fund in return for temporary access to pooled resources to correct balance of payment difficulties. Today, most countries use a flexible exchange rate monetary system. A flexible exchange rate system is a monetary system that allows the exchange rate to be determined by market forces or supply and demand. These two treaties were crucial for the transition from the gold standard to the flexible exchange rate system. The Jamaica Agreement proposed that countries have a special drawing right or SDR with the International Monetary Fund. SDRs represent a claim to currency held by an IMF member country for which they may be exchanged. A clean flow currency is market determined with minimal government intervention. A dirty flow currency has varying degrees of government intervention to maintain a range of acceptable values against other currencies. Some countries practice dollarization, which means to use the dollar or some other foreign currency together with a domestic currency. Argentina, for example, uses the dollar for transactions involving large amounts of money and uses the local peso for small amounts. Dollarization can be unofficially adopted by citizens or officially approved by a country. Hard currencies are leading world currencies of developed industrialized countries, including the dollar, the euro, yen, and the pound. Together, these currencies account for around 60% of the world economy. The dollar, euro, and yen lend monetary stability to each respective regional economy. The British pound sterling is another example of a leading world currency that gives economic stability. These hard currencies are used by emerging market countries to peg the values of the soft currencies. Soft currencies are currencies for emerging market countries that are less stable in value than hard currencies. Soft currencies are sometimes pegged to hard currency values. For example, currency pegging is a way for emerging market countries to enhance their monetary stability. China and Japan once fixed their money to the value of the U.S. dollar. You have reached the end of our lesson, the end of part 1. Thank you for listening and stand by for part 2 of the chapter lesson.